Alright guys, my knights. Now, I have never done this before. At least I don't think I've done You guys go look back over my channel see if I have. I don't think I've ever done this before where I've debunked a debunk of a debunk. <laughs> I know that sounds pretty strange. And I know that nobody's probably going to watch this video or care. But I'm doing this because I want to. Okay? When I, when, when I see stuff that, you know, I have to disagree with, I, I usually don't tend to make a video out of it. But now that I have this platform to do it, you know, I figured why not. So, um, Cool the artist. Uh, he has about 13,000 subscribers, so a few of you should probably know him. Uh, is debunking Seth the Programmer's debunk of his video that he made, Why Ben 10 is basically uh, omnipotent and could beat anybody. Now, he was mainly focused on, like, Goku and Superman. Now, Seth brought up some good points in his debunk. And the points, you know, uh, some of them, uh, some of them I think he could have, you know, elaborated on and showed more, you know, like evidence for. But, you know, it's the same with Kuro's debunk of his debunk. He didn't really show that much more evidence to kind of like bolster his points. He just said some things and then his fan base basically agreed with him. It was like, ah, you destroyed stuff, the programmer, yeah, yada, yada, yada. I mean, of course, that's how it's going to go. I mean, it's his fan base. But the problem is the statements that he said that he used against Seth. And so basically, I'm just going to be doing a debunk of his debunk of a debunk. You guys understand now? Good. Let's go on to get into this. Okay, so now I had already seen the video before I started making this one, but I basically am going to be rewatching the video and doing like a full thing of everything he says because I don't want to get uh, words misconstrued. I want to hear everything that he says exactly. So in this first like 40 seconds, he's basically he's basically like you know Seth, you know why don't you do a collab with me and stuff like that? You know we could have basically made this into a discussion, and I kind of understand that. I I kind of see where he's coming from. Like you know if you want to really discuss on. Um, you know, uh, basically, because the whole thing is based around that Alien X is omnipotent. You know, that's the main reason. Like I said, I, I mainly agree with a lot of Seth's points that he made. The fact is, you know, Seth brought up the fact that, you know, uh, Coral was using street level characters, as he put it, to, <laughs> you know, in his video. And basically, that was to basically only say that using any character who's not at the universal tiers of love or levels and above should not be even a question in this uh, fight or whatever should not even be brought up like uh, accelerator I think you know he, he had up as somebody who was used and I get it he's super fast and stuff like that but let's be honest when you have instant transmission it kind of it kind of throws your speed out the window only characters like the flash and them have even reached instantaneous levels of speed I've watched all the series of Ben 10. I don't think I've ever seen one character. Now, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I've seen ever even one character who can move faster than instantaneous movement. Not one. You know, and I'm not even talking about Alien X, but, you know, I'm talking about, you know, characters like that. So the whole thing is that Alien X is basically omnipotent and that he can just beat anybody. This He solves all of fiction. You know, you can do anything you want. You know, omnipotent means you're limitless, you are all-powerful, you can do anything you want. You're not affected by things such as time and space, uh, universal concepts, laws of physics, or anything like that. You know, you're, you're not bound to those laws. You're not bound to any type of uh, construct that is created by the multiverse, the omniverse, and all that. You know, that's basically the whole point that's getting across here that, you know, Alien X is basically that, that he's basically, you know, omnipotent and he could just do anything he wants. Now, of course, I'm going to be debunking that because I'll be hitting on a major talking point, you know, for why he's not omnipotent because I have a few. The thing, the problem is he has weaknesses, limitations. That already proves that he's not omnipotent. But, we're going to be getting into that later. I want to go beat by beat with this video. And it's about 10 to some odd minutes. So, and I'm, my, my video's already like 5 minutes long. So, I need to hurry this along. But, yeah, that first 40 seconds he was just talking about, you know, doing a collab. Basically discussing this in a more broader sense to where they can communicate with each other a little bit better. Okay, so he first brings up 
you know, um, something that they got because this whole this whole rebuttal that he's making is basically to talk on the points that Seth got wrong okay. in his video, and so basically he brought up Clockwork, and uh, apparently because that wasn't actually Seth, that was uh, Chuck the Cyber Cuck, <laughs> who had said that Clock, who had said that Curl said that Clockwork's rays basically work on anyone, and Curl's just basically saying that uh, no, he never said that and stuff like that. So. Um, I actually seen Curl's video on why Ben 10 would, you know, beat anyone, but I can't honestly remember whether or not he had said that Clockwork would hit him with any race, so I'm just had to take his word for it, you know, that uh, Clockwork's race would just work at any time on anyone and stuff like that. I can't honestly remember whether or not he said that, so I'm going to take his word for it that if he says he didn't say it, then he didn't say it. Okay, so in his second one, he basically is, you know, saying about how the video wasn't his video that he made wasn't based off of gaining more ad revenue, you know, about why it was so long and stuff like that. He, that it wasn't about gaining ad revenue or things of that nature. And he does admit that Seth did it in a joking manner, and I thought so too. You know, I don't think Seth literally meant that he only made this video for the ad revenue, but, you know, it's really whatever. Uh, I guess we could just go ahead and move on from this one. Okay, so in his next point, this is very interesting to bring up. He's basically saying that he never said that Ben scans the uh, aliens, that he would scan Goku and Superman to become an exact replica of them and stuff like that. He's saying, uh, Kuro is saying that he never said that, that he said that he would take on their DNA and stuff like that and basically become a version of their species. Uh, now, my thing with that is... Even if he did, there is not a good chance that he would be able to still defeat Goku or Superman. Now, he actually, uh, Kuro actually talks about this a little bit more when he's talking about how, you know, he would become, you know, a power version of a, of a Saiyan. Or he would become basically, you know, what Goku is, you know, uh, the most powerful Saiyan. he basically become that. But as we've seen in the actual series of Ben 10, Ben 10 has transformed into aliens of a certain species, and then he has fought that species. The fact is, everything that species knew, Ben was not tailored to knowing. Even though he learned how to use some powers during mid-battle, and he's really good at that, he was not tailored to knowing. Uh, I can remember when he fought uh, Diamond Head as another Diamond Head, if I'm not m mistaken, you know, the, like the Diamond dude that he had, like, this was back when he was a kid and stuff like that. I think he had fought he had fought another member of the species and lost that fight because he didn't know all the abilities and stuff of that species. So, Hikuro, I have to say you're wrong on that one. He would not be able just to pull out, like, Super Saiyan God or stuff like that or know the forms just because he transformed in. That's something he would have to learn about them. And with Superman's abilities, you know, as Seth and them pointed out, not all Kryptonians, and Kryptonians have your basic Kryptonian biology. So the martial arts and stuff like that, he would not, Ben would not know, or at least he wouldn't be as good as Superman with them, should he, you know, be able to process the information and still use it, and, you know, is integrating it, and stuff like that, and it's the same with Goku, in which, you know, Kuro even admits that, you know, he would probably be limited when it comes to Saiyan biology, like, you know, your flying, your key blast, and, you know, your basic uh, Saiyan levels of strength, durability, and all that. Which is it, which is indeed true, but in terms of like knowing the Kameha and stuff like that, even if he did, it would not be as strong as Goku's. It would be something that he could do and he could push that power and then grow and learn with it, but it would not be initially as strong as, say, somebody who's Goku's had the ability for years and decades even and has basically mastered it at this point to where he can raise it to any levels he wants. So basically that's what I just want to say on that factor. Now, in this, I knew we were going to get to Alien X, but like I said, I'm going beat by beat. Now, he says that, now, Kuro says that Alien X is not limited by, uh, uh, Sela, Chris, what, whatever, you you guys know the name, and, uh, Serena, uh, no, Bella Chris, something, something like that, I can't remember their names, I, I'm not really good with names, people. But the Alien X isn't limited by them. Actually, he is, and even, you can see, you can even see that... Like, during when the Annihilarg, or whatever, because they're going to bring that up in this video. I mean, well, Kuro and Kuro and I'm going to talk about that, you know, about Alien X. There was an argument as the universe is getting destroyed. And if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, 
weren't they still arguing and basically even after they came to a conclusion they were like it's too late to save the universe but you know from what i can see i don't think there's any evidence like i said curl doesn't put any evidence towards him ben not being uh, limited by them and by the way this was omniverse so it's the last series of ben 10 before they rebooted it and started him as a kid again so this was an omniverse that alien x was still limited and this was close to the end of the series by uh, Bellatrix and them. Now, if the scene carried on and they were like, okay, we're no longer going to be a part of Alien X. And you can basically do whatever you want with him at all times. So you can transform into him at all times, no matter what. And we won't ever show up again. Now, there's a scan or an actor or a creator statement that says that is the case. Then I will consider it a non-weakness. But, like I said, until then, that is an actual weakness. And by the way, Kuro even admits that it was a weakness, but you know that he no longer has it. He doesn't show any proof of that, but he says it. But he says that he no longer, um, you know, has that weakness. But the fact that he had it to begin with means that Alien X is not omnipotent by default. Okay, so Kuro in his next one brings up omnipotence again, and I do agree with him a little bit. Like, I, I don't think there's any canon material that I could find anyway that says that another celestial sapien could steal the powers from another but the fact is you know their powers can be stolen the fact that they and this this is a limitation their their powers can their powers can be taken and limited in fact um agrigor and ultimate alien can and material by the way unless you count the reboot rewriting the entire series in which case none of it's canon anymore <laughs> i mean i don't know that i don't know how that really works but Basically, his whole plan was that he was going to take a baby uh, Celestial Sapien and steal his powers and basically take his powers. Uh, people like Darkstar and Osmosians and stuff can take their powers too. So that's another limitation. Their powers can be um, their powers can be stolen. Their powers can be uh, taken and also limited by the limited by things like the Omnitrix. This point is going to come up later, but this is still true. You can limit their powers and abilities, and Kuro and Kuro later he's going to say that oh people you know there are have been aliens that can basically override Ben and stay as a transformation. The aliens could do so if he want to. Okay, the problem with that is yeah he could, but the fact that he was limited in the first place means that he's not omnipotent. And by the way, celestial sapiens once again are not omnipotent. They can so him absorbing the other powers of uh, celestial sapiens. Yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily make a difference to do so. It wouldn't necessarily be wise to do so, but not in the sense that he's gaining more omnipotence or whatever. No, it's in the sense that it just makes no sense because they have the same power set. But the problem is the fact that another weakness of Alien X is that he can be beaten by other celestial sapiens, and in fact you know the little clip and scan that they have is literally Ben's, uh, Ben's uh, Celestial Sapien getting beat on by another one and Ben ends up winning that fight he ends up beating that Celestial Sapien which means the fact that they can't be defeated also means that they are not omnipotent even if it's by each other they are not omnipotent okay so his next porn I, <laughs> I thought I said porn I might have said it but his next point comes in the fact that he's like he's saying that the writers were lying about Alien X or you know before Alien X got as powerful as he is the problem is Alien X should not be uh, needed for getting more powerful he should not have a need to because he's already omnipotent so if the discussion board which was talking about is Alien X omnipotent and you know the, you know whatever you know the writer and stuff were saying then then the problem comes in the fact that Kuro you're you're kind you're kind of missing the point on that the fact is they're asking where nice omnipotent it doesn't matter if alien X showed that level of power you know not then but later on it doesn't actually matter because he's omnipotent that means he's always been omnipotent he always will be omnipotent he has omnipotence I mean, it doesn't matter whether or not he shows his full omnipotence right then and there or later down the line. It does not matter. So you're missing the point on that. And he also says that the writers, you know, tend to lie to basically avoid spoilers and stuff like that. 
but he doesn't actually show any proof once again that this writer lied about this discussion board and then he calls it old and you know once again I already debunked that that it doesn't really matter because Alien X if he is truly omnipotent would be omnipotent regardless of whether or not he shows his power you know whether or not he shows that level of power to prove that he's omnipotent then he goes through a bun he, he basically goes through a little montage of showing only universal level feats and he also tries to equate Ben as a human as being multiversal and stuff like that I was trying to create that because, you know, he shows the scene where Paradox takes, you know, a Ben who's never had the Omni Church before outside of time stuff like that. First of all, that's Paradox is doing. This is Paradox is doing and Paradox is keeping him alive because he would have been destroyed by a multiversal level attack, which destroyed every other Ben there, including our original Ben. I only bring this up because he's going to bring it up later that, you know, Ben is basically omnipotent that he took an existence level explosion to the face. First of all, he didn't. He took a big bang to the face. Okay? And he died. The Omnitrix brought him back to life. It it basically kept him alive by using by, you know, transforming him and as he as he died or at after he died, basically the Omnitrix transformed him and then basically saved his life. That that that's it. He actually died. And then we also when the Quarolo Sapien time bomb exploded and it wiped out basically the multiverse of Ben 10's it killed our Ben 10 now because later in the video he's going to say that the Omnitrix basically pulls up any alien that Ben needs to survive any situation I guess the Omnitrix was taking an off day then because uh Ben didn't survive womp womp <laughs> but uh yeah so anyway okay so, you know, I was talking about it before and he, you know, just brought up in his next point about, you know, how Ghost Freak and all them uh, basically was able to keep Ben, you know, transformed, you know, against against his will. But the fact is, if we're talking about strictly Alien X, the fact is that's still a limitation because the fact that he can be depowered to begin with. The Omnitrix can take away the transformation from Ben. It can depower him. It can stop the Alien X transformation. I mean, show me where the author, I mean, you're probably going to say that the author was lying, but show me where the creators or somebody, because they're the ones who create the show, I don't know why you say they were lying and stuff like that. Now, I know they can, now, I know author stuff can do misinformation to kind of like lead you off from spoilers, but directly lying, I mean, it's not that it's impossible, it's just that if that's the statement we're going with, then basically you're taking out the canonness of Ben 10 because they're the creators of the show that's the problem so that means they've written the show like this they written Alien X to get one shotted by something by a weapon that is basically above universal so yes he can be affected by time now he brings up the they uh... it was never stated or shown that they can be taken actually once again and I'll bring this up again that Agregor or Agregor you know, the guy from Ultimate Alien, you know, basically was confident that he could take a Celestial Sapien's powers and abilities to gain this quote-unquote omnipotence. Whether or not it was shown or not doesn't mean nothing. The fact that the character had a method, had a way, or, you know, in some capacity believed him to be, believed himself to be able to do such a thing, these, these, these are the writers, these are the creators who put this in, they're basically saying that, yeah, it's a possibility. Otherwise, it wouldn't have mattered if Ben or them had stopped him or not because there would have been no purpose since, you know, he can't take the omnipotence or, you know, just his powers in general. You can't take on uh, uh, Sapien's powers, but this is also disproven because, you know, you got characters like Darkstar and the Osmosians who can take on powers. And it doesn't really seem to be any evidence against uh, Celestial Sapiens being in that category of powers you can take. And in fact, there's another weakness. Um... Uh, Nr and Nr and not. Huh, I need to figure out how to say his name. Nr or Nr, one of those. Uh, but basically, Nr Vladius. It's basically a planet, or you know, like a, a space inside the planet. And it's this planet that's basically so deadly and so bad that not even celestial sapiens can live there because their life force would be taken and drained from them. Boom, not omnipotent. His powers and stuff can be taxed on, even his life force. So, yeah, that's a weakness. He's not omnipotent.
Okay, so now he brings up this point to where he, because, you know, uh, Chuck brings up the fact that, you know, uh, DC and B DC and Cartoon Network did like a little collab or whatever comic for Ben 10. And so basically saying that, you know, Ben, and they're basically saying what uh, Coral is saying over here, that Ben could exist inside the DC universe and that he wouldn't be technically considered omnipotent anyway because there are actual omnipotent beings and the fact that he would exist there also means that he is prevalent to the conditions of that multiverse he is bound by the conditions and yes he can cross dimensions and stuff but the point is he is bound he would be bound to the DC multiverse he'd be bound to and he wouldn't be omnipotent there there's actual omnipotent people there that's the whole point now he brings up Alien Force Alien X and says, you know, you can't use them. The problem is that doesn't matter. You can. Why? Because it doesn't matter which version, according to you, he's omnipotent. Look up what the definition of omnipotent is. Okay? It doesn't matter if I use Alien X from Benton Series 1, Benton Series 2, 3, or 4. It does not matter. I can use any one of them because Alien X is omnipotent regardless that's what omnipotence means he is not limited that means he doesn't need to showcase his power that that uh, Alien X I'm not Alien X well yeah Alien X from Alien Force is just as powerful as he would be an ultimate alien or omniverse because he would be omnipotent he is not. You are contradicting yourself, Coral. Yes, we have been over this. They are only universal. I'm sorry that you don't believe it. They were, well, okay. He's not. He's not wrong. They're not only universal. They're about universal plus. He has never shown any feats or anything that are on the multiversal level scalings. Holding a Big Bang, holding the universe. Those are universal levels of power. Those are not multiversal. Omniversal or even existence level powers not hyperversal not outerversal it's not any of those there's a lot of versals <laughs> alien x has never shown feats equated to those levels beyond universal plus and things of that nature he makes a little comment inside of uh... seven s video when seven number talking about xenoverse characters and how the whole multiverse keyword multiverse you know exploded and was destroyed and uh... basically vanished right on top of Beerus and Whis and they were unaffected now he tries to say that Alien X went through the same thing he didn't Alien X did not have the multiverse collapse on him because as I said again with the Crow Sapien time bomb Alien X who does go up against a multiversal level threat dies <laughs> but a universal level threat yes he can survive it that's what he survived he survived Ben Prime or our Ben 10 he survived that universe being destroyed on top of him he did not survive a multiverse being destroyed on top of him now once again he brings up something that would contradict him the, about Ben's survival of the multiverse. Ben as the human and stuff did not survive. Once again, once the multiversal bomb and because you know Crowley misses himself, as I know it too, I you know I, I said that Seth was wrong there that the actual bomb did destroy everything. But once again, and Crowley misses himself, that the only reason that a Ben that the Ben who never had the Omnitrix survived is because of paradox. Not to mention every other Ben, including our Ben died they were erased from existence but yet the omnitrix should have saved him question mark <laughs> i guess it was just sleeping now once again you could just say well that's plot due stupidity okay well then i could say that alien x surviving the universe explosion is plot due stupidity you see you can't sit there and say stuff that happened didn't happen because you want to fit it to your own head cannon and try to say that a character is omnipotent and stuff like that. No, that's not how it works. I'm sorry, but the Omnitrix did not save Ben. This is not a consistent thing. Where it just saves Ben and gives him the exact alien to, you know, be able to stop and finish off that uh, uh, attack or whatever. It isn't a working class thing. Otherwise, every Ben 10 there would have 
transformed into alien X. It would have just been a plethora of omnipotent plus beings. And then they would have all stopped the bomb. Hell, one of them could have just done it. But yet, they don't, and they all end up dying. And the Omnitrix goes to the new Ben 10, who was only saved due to Paradox being a time walker and basically being able to move. Basically, he's a fourth dimensional level character. He can move throughout time and space. He's 3D infinite, as people would say. And basically, he can traverse time and space and also move beyond them. He can exist in areas without time and space. So he's a fourth dimensional level character. And he basically pulled Ben there and is basically keeping... And you know, keeping and he's keeping Ben there. Yes, he is. He is serious because Alien X did not survive the attack. And even Coral pulls up even Coral pulls up the scan where Alien X is punching the time bomb. And mind you, this is an older Ben 10 who's not only older than our Ben 10 from you know our prime Ben 10, but he's also more experienced, has more variations with his aliens, and probably has more knowledge on how to access their powers and abilities, and even made a fusion character of Alien X to become Atomic X, and still died. So yeah, we are serious. He didn't survive. That's the point. You can bring up the scan, but show the part after it where he got destroyed, because uh, not omnipotent. Now, before Koro continues on this point, he brings up Ultimate Alien X, which would be the evolved form of Alien X. Now, tell me, because clearly I don't think Koro, and I'm not, I'm not saying nothing against Koro's intelligence, he clearly put a lot of thought into his uh, first video, and he's putting uh, a, a, a semblance of thought into this one. Please tell me why an omnipotent being needs to evolve, because the whole purpose of Ultimate Alien and the Ultimate Aliens are Ultimate Alien X, is that they are the evolved perfected states of each alien that Ben has this means that alien X evolved state the multiplier would be what omnipotent plus <laughs> no he's not omnipotent the fact that he can evolve into ultimate alien X and Coral admits once again that he's contradicting himself because alien Ultimate Alien X is confirmed to exist. This is canon. We just don't see him. But he is confirmed to exist. So, um, I'm a little bit confused. Uh, Evolved Alien X is omnipotent plus question mark? Yeah, I, I don't think so. <laughs> and he brings up um, Alien X. Uh, just happened to sit there until Goku gets tired or, you know, burns out his energy. The first, first of all, Goku is more powerful than him. That's the problem. Goku is more powerful. As we've already established, he's around low multiversal levels of power. That's stronger than Alien X. I'm sorry, but it is. Sorry that your feelings are hurt, that he's not omnipotent, but it is. And the fact is, other Celestial Sapiens can defeat other Celestial Sapiens. Which means that they're all around the same levels of power, if not maybe one or two being slightly stronger. But, uh, <laughs> omnipotence. They shouldn't be able to beat each other at all. And the fact that they can means that they are not omnipotent. If one can have more power than the other, they are not omnipotent. You, you can't be more omnipotent than something that's already omnipotent. What the fuck? <laughs> Now, he shows a clip of where, you know, because uh, Chuck is like, oh, there's a Superman that could hold the universe in his hand. And he shows a clip of, I forget the alien's name, but, you know, of him holding a universal level explosion, which he's, which Kuro is also contradicting himself again, because later in his video, he's going to say it was existence level when it wasn't, it was only universal level. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's saying he's basically holding it into his hands, and then he blasts it. He blasts it at uh, uh, the guy who I can't, who I can't remember. You know, he's 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 a he's a Krolo sapien. But uh, basically, he blasts it at him, and you know, stuff like that, which is perfectly fine and all. But you can't then turn around and say that that universe level of power is existence level. Now, when somebody says I destroyed all of your, all of existence, or I destroyed your very existence. That means a lot of things. That doesn't mean that they're like if if I were to destroy um, uh, a piece of paper, I destroyed that paper existence. It existed. Now it doesn't. I erased it from existence. 
Does that mean I'm existence level? Question mark. I could wipe out the whole universe? Question mark. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because if you're existence level and you're all existence level, that means you can wipe out not only the universe, but like the omniverse, hyperverse, outerverse. I mean, it's existence itself. Question mark. <laughs> so, no. And he, he he said earlier about characters who stood outside of existence. Okay, first of all, there's one thing to be standing outside of existence. It's another thing to be the one destroying existence or recreating it. And that's all of existence, not just a universe. Which, yes, to some would be their entire existence because, well, it's their entire universe. So, yes, they could equate that to, it's my entire existence. But that doesn't mean that it's all of existence as a whole. Every multiverse, every reality, and all that. That's not what that means. So, when he showed that clip, you know, it was kind of like, I guess he was trying to say that Seth and them were saying that um, Alien X or whoever couldn't do that. And they never said that. Never said that, you know, he couldn't. You know, he was basically saying that they are Superman because Kuro's whole video is based around that Alien X and basically Ben 10 himself can defeat people like Goku and Superman. So when they show that, they said that there's more powerful versions of Superman and things like that that wouldn't be so easy to take out. That's was Chuck's point of basically saying that there's a Superman out there who can hold a universe or whatever. So I don't know why Kuro played that clip. And I don't know why he didn't get that from that. Now, he puts right here a little statement. He's basically saying that if uh, Ben 10 scanned that uh, version of Superman, that he could just download his moveset and stuff like that. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of questionable. Because, once again, it brings up the point of whether or not he'd be able to have such immense... I mean, even if he had the immense power, would he be as good as that Superman? Because there have been multiple other versions of Superman who have had less power than that version of Superman, but who have beat that version of Superman. But there's been ones who have more powerful than another version of Superman and, and has beat that one. So it, it kind of really calls into question whether or not Ben's scanning of the alien could get him the power he needs to fight that level of Superman. Now, I'm not saying that he could or couldn't. I'm just saying that, you know, it does call into question whether or not that's a valid reason to say that Ben 10 would win because he could just scan Superman and do everything he could do. I mean, that seems kind of questionable. Now, before he gets to the Annihilarg and stuff like that, uh, Seth and them bring up an actual good point that is true. Alien X is still affected by time and in, in an aspect of it, by time and space. He's, aspect, he's affected by time and space. Things that basically are throughout the, throughout the multiverse, okay? You know, it's basically something that's prevalent in the multiverse. The alien is still affected by that. He is. He's not more stronger than a multiverse. He's not omnipotent and stuff like that. Now, uh, Seth and them bring up the point that, you know, they start labeling off beings and stuff that are actually omnipotent or on levels that would, like, totally annihilate um, Ben 10. Now... If Kuro's trying to sit here and use the whole scanning that he could just scan all these aliens and then be able to transform into them, it's not it's not an omnipotent ability, okay? There may come a foe inside the DC universe, and I'm pretty sure there is, I just can't think of any right now, because there probably is, that cannot be scanned or cannot be replicated, cannot have their abilities and stuff replicated, or you know, cannot have their species replicated. Beings like the one above all, really, who is actually omnipotent, he would not be able to be replicated. You cannot replicate the one above all. <laughs> so, Ben trying to scan him and then say, well, you know, I can do everything you could do now is impossible. Literally impossible. He cannot do that. But, um, no, the, state, the statement is pretty factual. And now he's about to run through the whole Nile arc and how it's going to destroy the universe. And then he's going to go over, you know, basically Ben 10's watch gave him the right alien to basically survive the universe and then, you know, recreate it and yada, yada, yada. Because, you know, Ben fails to stop it. But also, uh, Bellicus and uh, Serena, actually during that, during that, during that sequence, 
are still limiting Alien X because he is standing there unable to act like Kuro. Please give me some actual author statements, some actual creator statement that says that Bellatrix and them do not no longer limit him because right there proves you wrong. They are limiting him because he's standing there as the universe is being destroyed. And by the time they come to a decision of whether or not to act, you know, they even, you know, if I'm not mistaken, they basically tell Ben that it was too late. So I don't, I don't, I don't know where you're getting at, Kuro. Jesus, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> like, Kuro, Kuro, what the hell? What are you doing? As a matter of fact, the, um, I do think the Omnitrix will allow that to happen because it's happened before. Now, I'm not going to use the Crow Sapien. Well, I am going to use the Crow Sapien Time Bomb again. But first, I'm going to take you back to an episode where Ben was fighting, because he showed a clip of it, where Ben's arm got lopped off by a dimension cutting axe, right? Why didn't the Omnitrix stop that? Because he's saying that it's an invalid argument to say that Goku could uh, speed blitz Ben and cut his arm off, but the Omnitrix wouldn't allow it. But yet, it did for when his arm got chopped off by a fucking dimensional axe. And it also did when he got destroyed by a multiversal destroying time bomb. Yeah, so Omnitrix, not very consistent on when it wants to protect Ben. <laughs> now, I guess for the time bomb, you could say that, oh, well, Ben 10's watch landed on another Ben 10, so it was fine. Right, because all the other Ben Tens who got destroyed have the same excuse. Okay. And so, yeah, the argument is still valid. He could cut off his arm. Whether or not the Omnitrix would act on that is a little bit different. Now, I know I brought up the dimensional, uh, I, did, I brought up the dimensional, uh, cutting, uh, the dimensional act cutting off his arm and I know Curl if he does ever see this is probably gonna say well Ben Ben's arm was still intact he still had use of it or whatever okay that's not the point the point is the Omnitrix allowed it to get cut in the first place yeah that so Goku could now his next point he brings up is well that would imply that Goku knows what the Omnitrix is okay that's a fair point he probably doesn't and probably wouldn't know to cut Ben's arm off but Ben 10 would just go through the alien roster. I mean, it's like he forget Ben's personality. Ben Ben looks at Goku and probably thinks he's a regular human. Like, he challenges him to a fight. He doesn't even know he's an alien. Until Goku starts shooting fucking lasers and stuff. Then he's like, okay, well, this guy's not an alien. Whether or not he would scan him or just pick an alien that he thinks could be Goku, you know, is a little bit in the question because I doubt that he would scan them because so many times in the series he's fought these alien creatures and he just picked an alien he went through the roster of aliens till he found the perfect one or the Omnitrix found the perfect one for him to be able to combat this so who knows the Omnitrix may immediately go to Alien X when it sees Goku and it's like holy shit this guy's like fucking these levels of high, like, no alien you got in this damn watch could be him, but, you know, I'm gonna try out Alien X. So, basically, that, that whole thing is called in question. This is, this video is long as fuck. I'm sorry, guys. But, so, in conclusion, because I'm basically done, in conclusion, Alien X is not omnipotent, and he has weaknesses. He has canon weaknesses that can be exploited. Such as weaknesses as not being, uh, such weaknesses as not being able to make an action without his two, with two, without two of the three personalities agreeing. Such as him being able not to survive on a harsh planet. And even weaknesses such as him being able to be overpowered by members of his own species and people who are just generally stronger than him. And also, it's pretty much out there that his powers and abilities can be stolen or at least absorbed in some regards we ha we have proof of this but yeah so anyway don't get me wrong i'm not trying to hate on a uh, coral or anything like that i'm just saying that uh sorry dude but your i guess attempt to debunk this debunk kind of failed as he's, he's gonna say that to seth too you know later on well, actually, like, right here at the end of this video, when, you know, Seth's like, you know, it's my job to debunk stuff, and, you know, he's gonna say, well, you failed. Well, I'm telling you now, Carl, you failed. <laughs>